Statistics and Excel. Election poll statistics example. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem the blank tab basically a blank sheet so we can practice formatting excels in excel as we work through the practice problem let's go to the blank the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing now in prior examples we imagined that we had the whole population data set and then we took a sample of that information from the data set to see how closely the characteristics of the sample tie out to the full population in this case, we're not starting off with the full population data set. However, we are starting with an assumption in a the actual population, the assumption being is 60% for candidate A. That's the assumption that we are making. And then the question is, well, how can we create a sample in Excel using our Excel tools to kind of mirror the data that we might get in a polling type of situation so we can practice our statistical tools. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna imagine that we had 10, 10 example, samples, for example, and just use our uh, random between one and 100 function in order to do that. And then we'll get our data from that information and we'll do some calculations on it. And then we'll just practice using our Excel and ex extend that same concept to, to taking a whole lot of samples and then we'll make a histogram from the results of those samples. All right, let's go to the blank tab and let's do it. So we're on the blank tab. I'm currently 175% on the zoom in. I'm gonna format the cells first by selecting the entire sheet with the triangle up top, right clicking on the cells, formatting those cells. I like to go typically to currency, bracketed numbers for negatives uh, and red for negatives, no dollar sign. And we don't really need any decimals, so I'm gonna remove the decimals in this case. And so there we have it, let's say okay. So now we've got the underlying formatting of the worksheet. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, holding down control, zooming or scrolling in on the mouse. Okay, so let's, let's make our random generated samples. Let's call this sample one. I'm also gonna make the whole sheet bolded, embolden the whole sheet. So let's, I'm gonna select the triangle again, home tab up top, font group and embolden the whole sheet all right so the first sample if we're trying to simulate that 60 percent uh is going to be for candidate a we could say well what if i make a random a, a random generation between one and a hundred and everything that's be, uh, below 60 or including 60 zero including 60 will be then uh what we count for candidate a and everything above that will be uh, a randomly generated item that is not for candidate A. That's so that's one way we can kind of structure this so we can practice our statistical kind of testing using Excel's tools, trying to mirror uh, an, an actual real world situation, right? So we're gonna say, all right, this equal let's this equals random between, and I'm just gonna say bottom part is going to be hold on a sec that's an array that's not what i wanted ran 
random between. That's the one I want. There it is, random between. <laughs> the bottom number is gonna be one, the second argument, comma, and notice I'm looking at this box right here to see the second argument is uh, then 100. So between one and 100. Bracket it up and enter it, so 63. So that result then, would we're imagining would be that that would be a random sample that wasn't for candidate A, because it's over the 60, right? Anything from 60 or under, we're imagining uh, if we ask someone if they are for or against candidate A, would say they're for candidate A and everything over the 60, we're imagining is a result saying they're not for candidate A, right? So that's gonna be our, our uh, example here. And so then let's go ahead and copy this down. Now I could uh, copy it down to like, let's make it copy it down to like 150 or something. I'm gonna try to make it not exactly 100, even though that's the tendency, so that when we do our statistical analysis, it's not, we have to make sure we understand what's happening uh, and do the percentage of the total. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle here and I'm gonna look at the numbers on the left-hand side to go down to like 151. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm looking at those numbers on the left and I'm, whoop, I went way too far. I was talking when I was looking at them. I was looking at them, but then I still, it didn't help. And then I'm gonna say, okay, there's to 151. So there we have it. So there's our randomly generated numbers uh, all the way down. So now I'm gonna go to sample two. Let's just make 10 samples. So I'll call this one sample two, and then we'll select both of them and put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it to the right until we should get 10 of these. So five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 10. There we have it. Let's do some, let's do some formatting up top by going to the home tab in the font group, hit the drop down, but not too hard. Don't break it when you hit it. Hit the drop down, we'll make it black, and then on the on the colors of the letters, white, and then let's center that alignment center. I'm gonna wrap the text, alignment group, wrapping the text, and then I'll make all of these a little skinnier by selecting the entire column. B to K, right or let go, put my cursor in between any of those columns and squish it up a bit, scrunch it up. All right, so now let's, all I'm gonna do is then copy these samples on over to, to K as well. So I can take this whole bit right here and I'm just gonna fill handle it at the bottom. I could copy it by the way, cause it'll copy the formula as you can see in the formula bar, but I'm gonna just fill handle it and drag it over to K. Now notice it's a little tricky when I do this because I can't see the headers up top, but I noted that it was going to K and I only had 10 of them, so I can copy them over. So now we've got this whole thing of random samples. Let's make it blue and bordered as is usually our custom. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab. Actually, let's make a table around it. I'm gonna unhighlight it and put my, cell, my cursor anywhere in the group of numbers, insert tab, tables group, and then insert the table. If you have any more than one cell collected or, or selected, then it'll try to put a little table in place. If you just have one cell, it'll put the table properly to, uh, what is that, B1 to K151 looks right. So we'll say, okay, and there we have it. So now I can easily, and let's squish them up again. I'm gonna select from B to K. They widen the cells, so let's squish it back up again. I like to conserve some space if, if I may. Uh, uh, so then like you can see how it reshuffles every time we do some action to it. So let's keep that as our random generator tool. And then I'm just gonna copy these and paste them over here, but paste them one, two, three, so that the formulas are no longer there, picking a random sample of 10 samples. So now we're imagining we took, we this one sample had 150, I think that we did, uh, uh, that, that, that we're, that we're uh, judging. And then we, we did that 10 times, right? So now I'm gonna copy this whole thing, just selecting the whole column from B to K, right click and copy. And let's put that over here 
let's skip a line so I can put some totals in column N. Right click and I'm gonna paste it, but I'm gonna paste it one, two, three. Paste it one, two, three. And so there we have it. I'm gonna reformat my formatting, selecting the, and I could, by the way, paste the formatting. So I could like right click and paste just the formatting. And so now I at least have the headers and it squishes them up nicely, but I'm still gonna make this middle bit blue. So I'm gonna make this blue. And so now we've got our randomly generated numbers that are not shuffled around, home tab, font group, bucket. If you don't have that blue, more colors, standard blue. Okay. And then let's border it, font group, drop down, all borders. All right, so now we just, what, I, what, what they call hard-coded numbers are in here, no formulas. <clears throat> so now I, I can take my results of, of these samples. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and I can say, all right, let's, let's say 4A. So how many of these, if I'm selecting these, are 4A? Well, everything that is above, I mean, below 60, including 60 and below, we're imagining is 4A. Right, so the random selection had anything because because sixty percent, you know, is so we're saying everything from sixty to below on a random sample between one of a and a hundred is gonna be for A. Anything above sixty, we're gonna be saying is for non A, some other than A, right? So that's gonna be the idea. So how can we do that with a, a formula? Uh, we're gonna use a count if formula. So it's a little bit tricky because we wanna say count if it's uh, less than or equal to 60. So let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna say equals count if, and, and we only have really one condition, so I can just use this first one. I'm gonna select the entire range, so I can do this a little bit quickly. I'm using the keyboard up, and then I'm gonna hold down Control Shift up, selecting the entire range. Now I'm holding uh, just Shift down so that it's now selecting just the range I want. Now I can continue with my argument up top here if I would like to, and that moves up the argument bar up top. So, so that's kind of nice. So I don't really have to go all the way back down again. And I can say, okay, what's the next bit of the argument? I'm gonna say comma. And then we wanna say, I've gotta say less than or equal to. Now, because those are, are non-numerical terms, we have to put quotes around them. So I'm gonna say quote less than or equal to end the quote and then i have to attach it to the number 60 so we have to use an and and then 60. so i'm going to say so there's our formula i'm going to say enter and there it is if i double click on it i probably should have gone down here so you could see it more clearly anyway but here's the range there's the the quotes uh greater than or equal to and then an and and the 60. So it pulled everything uh, greater than or equal to 60. Now you might like, if we had this out of 100, this is why I didn't want to have a sample of just 100, because if it was out of 100, you'd say, well, that should come out to around 60% or something. But it's a sample, so it won't be perfect. But we didn't do it out of 100 purposely because that, uh, because not all our samples are gonna be exactly 100 people that, or whatever we're sampling. Now we could say not A and do the same thing for not a, uh, and, and I could just say, well, I know there's what, 150 samples. So I could say this equals 150 minus uh, 102, so 48. But let's do it with a formula to practice our formula, similar formula equals, we're gonna say count if brackets, I'm gonna do it all with the keyboard now, shift nine, up arrow on the keyboard, selecting the range, holding control shift, on the keyboard and then the up arrow takes me all the way to the top. Now I'm just holding shift down to select the range. Now I'm gonna scroll back down this time so that I can actually see what I'm working on down here because it's a little bit easier to see possibly. And then I'm gonna say comma and we want this, I'm gonna put the, the, the criteria is gonna be brackets and greater than, I don't need an equal sign here, just greater than brackets and 60. So we want this one to be just simply greater than 60. So enter, 
So there we have it. So then I can put the total to give me a double check with the trusty sum function, the most famous function equals the SUM, shift nine on the keyboard, up arrow on the keyboard, holding down shift up again. So we're going N152 to N153, enter. So there's a total of 150, which makes sense because I'm on 151 plus the header row. So there's 150 there. Let's put an underline, home tab, font group, underline. All right, now let's say percent. Let's make this a percent for A. So now the percent is going to be this divided by the total. So the per percent will simply be equal to the 102 divided by up once to the 150. And then I need to percentify that cell. That's what I call it. Home tab, number group, percentify. You better recognize the percentify. All right, we'll keep it there. All right, and then I'm going to say percent not a, and I could I could do this the same way equals now the 48 divided by the total divided by the 150. Enter, and then and then we're going to percentify home tab number percentify, and then uh, font group underline. Let's sum it up. It should come out to 100 percent, right? equals the sum shift nine up arrow holding down shift up again comes out to one let's make it a percentification cell home tab number group percentify and so there we have it so it came out to 6832 so we took a random sample uh, of of between one and a hundred and you would think so that's kind of a little bit more skewed than you would think right from a random sample but it's a random sample so that could happen and then i'm going to select all of these put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it to the right and we'll see what happened in our 10 samples here so we had uh, 68 65 57 so some are above some are below as would be what we would basically expect so now let's make let's make this bottom column uh blue maybe so I'm going to select the whole thing to make it this, our, our result column. I'll make it home tab, font group. Let's make it dark blue and white. And let's put some font group borders around it. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put this column, uh, let's, say, let's say the percent of A column, uh, in a column format. So let's copy, copy this and say I'd like to see my results up here up top so I'm going to go up top and say I want my results to be in a column format up here so let's paste it first in column Z right click pasting it one two three or let's paste it yeah let's paste it one two three and then I'll I'll add the percents home tab number percentify and then I'm going to copy it again and then paste it in Y Y that's just where we landed we're paste that's why we paste it in Y. right click and we're going to paste it this time special and we're going to paste we're going to transpose it this time transpose and boom so now we've got it transposed right there let's delete these numbers they're no longer useful you have served your purpose you're no longer necessary or oh, that was dark i had to you will be deleted home tab uh font group and black white let's center it and then uh and then i could put some black and white here maybe or let's just put some borders and then i i could compare that to the expected so what did we expect to happen 0. 0.6 60 percent let's percentify that cell home tab numbers percentify so then the difference difference the difference from the expectation equals the 68 minus the 60 let's percentify that home tab number percentify and then we'll select these two up top fill handle them grabbing fills handle and dragging fills handle down the fill handle all right let's make these top two black and white home tab font group black white center and then we'll select all these data 
home tab font group uh, borders and let's make this bucket down blue and then we can pick up the average at the bottom let's let's first add another column here so that I can put my average uh, down here so I'm gonna put my cursor on column Y I'm gonna select the whole column because when I add a column it'll always add it to the left so I'm just gonna right click and insert and so now we'll just add a column I'll put this average so let's just take the average equals this the the equals the average of these which comes out if I percentify it home tab numbers group percentify uh, we it comes out to 61 so if I take the average of all the results I'm gonna then it comes out to be you know pretty close right so 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 the the, the bottom line when we simulated 10 10 samples of 150 we came out we came out to uh, 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 an average of, of you know a little over over under uh, well hold on a second this should be equal to the one above it and let's copy that down all of these should be 60 we don't need totals down below okay that makes more sense so now we were over we were over we were under we were under under over 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 under right but but and then if we take the average of the whole uh, of the whole thing let's copy this down one more time this one came out exactly to 60 really huh uh, then we're at we're at 61 so how many sam like if we had the samples this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this is sample number sample number making that home tab font group black white centered let's center the numbers here too home tab alignment center and then let's make that our blue and our borders so so and then let's make this x a little skinnier too i'm going to put my cursor between x and y and make a skinny x skinny x y because the x is between x and y so we'll keep the y the same and we'll skinny the x okay so that's the so that's the uh so that's what, how we can kind of use some of our tools in excel uh and 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 kind of simulate the random some random results we can practice with our statistical tools now once we get the idea with this with this random sample i took 10 sets of samples of of 150 we could take way more than that right i could well what if i did what if i took you know a 500 samples of of this amount let's 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 see right i'll i'll do more of that next time that's what we'll do next time we'll take a whole bunch and i'll let's make l skinny too i'm gonna make l skinny Okay, sorry for interrupting myself on that, but so next time we'll basically uh, we'll just make more samples so we can practice using you know some larger data sets and maneuver in around Excel as we do so, and then once we get our results over here, we could then possibly plot the results on on uh, say an inst a, a histogram and see 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 what the results start to look like if we were to put them in the format of a histogram.